Welcome back to Bunter Yard. Today we are going to weather this uh, pannier tank. Um, this brings back memories. This is one of the first locos, not this particular one, one of the first locos I've ever had. I uh, didn't have the little um, tendery type cold shuttly bit on the back. Um, mine was the shorter version, but yeah, so uh, but this is a quite a nice one. Uh, it's got uh, handrails and some nice detail. Um, and someone stuck some pipes on there as well. But we'll leave those, they're all right. Um, so we're not gonna go too mad on this one. Um, famous last words. Um, we're gonna need to take the, uh, the body off first. So if we take the, um, the coupling uh, hooks off, which I've already done, they just unscrew, and then we can take the whole body off. And um, we can use the Bantlejard patent um, a body holder. Um, I've got loads of these. If you need any of these, just uh, they're, they're five each, um, and I can send you in a, a free post as well. So uh, a bargain. So we're going to start with our oils. Um, we, these are for the water streaks. Um, we're using white and the oil brusher, which is buff. So it's just a kind of different tone, really, just to add a just to mix it up a little bit. So we're going to use the oil, uh, the white one, straight from the from the tube, and we need to mix that down a little bit. So we'll use some uh, odorless thinners. It's the one I use. Um, I got this from the local art shop. But there's lots on um, on Amazon, so I'll uh, I'll pop a link down below for those. If you need to find the odorless thinners, the uh, make sure it's odorless, otherwise it stinks the house out. Um, just use a little bit in there, um, ready for later when we. Um, when we blend as well, so we use some of this to mix that one down from the uh, from the tube, just to make it a bit more workable. So it hasn't got to be too thin. It's not really. We don't want like a paint. We just want a really uh, kind of uh, thin oil or a thick paint, depends on how you look at it, I guess. There we go. Just so you can see what I'm doing. If not tried oils before, um, try you know just just buy one or two colours, just a black and a white or a brown, um, and give it a go. It's uh, it just makes a whole lot of difference. It really is a, a nice thing to do. And if you make a mistake, as you'll see, as we get onto this, you know if you don't like what you what you're doing, then you can uh, take it off or put more on. So normally for uh, any streaks, whether it's water or rust, I'll just sort of dot it in in the kind of places where I think it's going to be um, so around these I don't know if they're valves or not but these are uh, these water fillers they're going to be there and they're going to pour down the side so we'll have some marks down the side as well so I'm just trying to work out where I think it's going to be and lots of these I've seen um, images of these they seem to have a big chunk where the where the word western is there seem to be lots and lots of uh, sort of um, streak there and obviously it needs to come from somewhere so we'll put a little mark at the top a lot of the top we're going to cover with um, with some weather, weathering soon anyway so um, so you won't see too much at the top but we might as well put it there anyway and start as we mean to go on um, all these different layers they just add uh, more and more sort of interest to the whole thing as we get towards the end so I uh, should normally leave this to dry a little bit, but uh, I'm, I'm going to dive straight in. And we've got thinner on the brush, and we're just going to streak it down there. It looks a little bit hideous and heavy at the moment, but we'll um, we'll filter that down and we'll blend that in a little bit. Always looks a bit scary when you start and a little bit pathetic, really. But um, I need to start somewhere. So the brush is really, uh, you know, as dry as I can get it. And we're just going to drag that down into different streaks. Now, if you don't like it at all, you can put lots of thinner on your brush and you can clean the whole thing off and start again. As you'll see later on, we'll probably add some more and uh, make the effects a little bit more sort of pronounced. Now, as the oil's dry, you will, the especially with white, you'll see the um, so the the effect it will dry a lot whiter 
um, so we need to end up then taking more off um, or blending it further in so we'll just go around the model a couple of times you'll see and uh, and continue blending it until we're happy and lots of this is going to be covered with uh, different colors with soots and and um, the grime and so on but it will be there so it will be noticeable that there will be a difference so we know where these streaks have been and the problem with this particular one has got the hand row on so that you have to kind of do it in two halves rather than being able to drag it all the way down we've got to drag it to the uh, to the rail and then sort of from the rail underneath just to try and make it look like it's a single run so it takes a little bit of time good thing is about oils they take such a long time to dry probably if you leave it to dry it's going to take a day or so um, so you've got lots of time to play with it and you know, do the other side have a cup of tea come back and then have another look and see what you think this is uh, the, probably the longest part of the whole um, the whole video actually and the whole time that I spent doing this um, and ironically it's probably going to be one of the features that won't be as obvious as some of the rest but anyway it's it's a part of it um, and yeah, I think it's an important step to do so um, that's why we spent so much time but we'll go back over this again in a bit and we'll do more and we'll add some more and we'll take some more off it's just a matter of doing it until you uh until you're happy with it if you want to do things like um sort of spills if you want to make it softer just put more oil on your brush and then um then just sort of drop it in and um you, you'll get like a um, yeah, like a spill rather than a run, it will just sort of fade out into a, into a pool. So uh, try some different techniques with your brushes, using uh, uh, more or less thinners, using dry brushes, and different types of brushes as well. You'll get different sort of textures. So you can see it's now sort of thinning down a little bit. Still, uh, obviously, it's a little bit too. Uh, too white and a bit too obvious so we're going to have to deal with that it doesn't look like it but we are actually getting a little bit closer we'll, we'll uh, soften this up in a minute we don't really want any of the brush strokes to show um, or be too obvious so it's nice to have a, a, a few little streaks but we don't want it to look like we've painted it on obviously that's the idea is to, uh, is to avoid that So it's dried for a little bit now and um, I've used a, uh, a very soft brush. This is actually a brush from, uh, you get with resin if you uh, if you do any resin printing. Um, this is one you get with the Eligu resins. But it's quite a nice soft brush. I don't use it for the uh, for the resin, but I've got loads of them now. So uh, and I thought they're coming quite useful. So I'm just gonna use that to blend it even further. Um, and you can see now the effect is not as kind of obvious and uh, uh, sort of manufactured it's looking more like um, water streaks I think anyway and we just go around and around the model until we're entirely happy with uh, with the look of that So 
so that's getting a bit closer now and like I say if there's not enough if you want to add some more just add, add another dot in and then drag that down so if you want to emphasize a particular place where a run is you can just add some more in And then with this small brush, we've got some thinners on there, um, not too much. Um, and we can use that then to shape the runs as well. just to add a, a bit of uh, additional texture we are using this uh, these oil brushes from um, from MIG um, and these are already pre-mixed so we don't need to mix this up with any more thinners we just use it straight from the uh, straight from the bottle and this is a like I said buff color so it's going to have a slightly different color to the rest so just going to add a few little dots in and then just drag those as well I'm just in the same process before so just using a, a damp brush to, uh, to to drag that down to streak it and also to sort of model it to um, to change the the sort of shape of the run if you stuck with it this long um, well done um, we're sort of 12 minutes into this and we're still doing the first bit we're halfway through the video and still doing the oils um, but a lot of people ask about oils so I thought I'd just show you um, how I do them um, they don't always take as long as this it depends on what you're doing but um, with these we just will get this this right and as I say when we get towards the end a lot of this will be covered but the uh, the sort of effect will still be there um, underlying okay so we'll leave that there for now um, we're just gonna add some uh, some airbrush some colors in so the top layer I'm doing with a really really dark brown so I've added brown with uh, with black in so to make it quite dark we'll use some black as well for contrast in a minute and kind of gonna follow the same sort of general pattern that the water's in um, and this will just soften the effect down a little bit more so we'll still see the water streaks hopefully but um, it won't be as as obvious and that bell thing on the top which is um, hideously sort of plastic looking um, I was going to paint that initially but um, I was in a bit of a, a rush to, to get this far so I decided that I'll just I would um, just sort of make sure I paint it when it's on so make sure it gets a covering of uh, dark um, brown or black just to dull it down a little bit because it's a little bit too bright so 
So this um, black brown is um, really just to simulate. So sort of, I didn't want the uh, the top just to be soot. So uh, this is kind of fallout from um, from that you know the track and and mixed in with the soot and everything. So it's uh, a very dark brown. on the roof as well and then back across the um, across the body across the boiler so you can see now the water streaks are still there but um, not as obvious as they were before so well uh, so we've, we've done hopefully that's uh, that looks a bit better now And now I've just loaded the gun with uh, with just black. Uh, this is Vallejo Air, so it's quite a, um, it's already pretty thin, and um, we're not aiming to cover the model. We just want to make a sort of darker patch along the top and the middle, so around the chimney, and uh, yeah, across the top really, where um, the the soot and the smoke would wash into. And then we'll a bit more around the front because that would um, the soot would then wash wash down the side as well. So a bit more on the front. So just adding some more black just around the areas that will be dirty around the um, where the coal is, and that's going to pick up some uh, some coal dust and soot. And on the uh, the buffer beams as well. Before that totally dries on the buffer beams, we're just going to wipe that back, just to uh, just to give an appearance of uh, it being not particularly looks after that well. And we'll do the same to the back as well. I won't show you the back. And then our final coat with the air spray with the airbrush even is um is just dirt so it's just adding a um a, a dirt layer to the to the sort of lower portions here it's probably not so easy to see the color of what we're doing here I was sitting by a window and the and the sun suddenly changed as i was doing that and everything's gone a bit yellow so uh apologies for that hopefully you'll see it uh, in the next couple of shots so around the back here um, I've gone on with the second layer and we'll get our soft brush again and if we just drag it down it'll create some streaks just like that so almost gone but it's uh, it is more visible um, well unfortunately not on the video but it is visible on the finished model I hope
Okay, so we just need to now do the chassis and the wheels. So just to make it easier, I'm going to take off these coupling rods. Um, these are similar to the um, the ones we did on the on the 08 a little while back. So uh, it probably is actually the same chassis to be be honest. Um, but we take off the coupling rods now. The middle screw is different to the outer ones. It's slightly longer, so uh, need to keep that separate so we know which way they go back in. So I've taken off both sides and we're just going to spray this in black. Now I'm trying to be relatively careful. We don't get too much over spray on the wheels and definitely not on the pickups because um, obviously the train won't run so we need to make sure that that's cleaned off afterwards. And we'll clean off as much as we can now. But um, this will get a full service after once it's all fully dried. So we'll take the body back off again and we'll make sure the wheels and the pickups are cleaned properly. But we might as well take off what we can now. So just using a, um, a damp cotton bud. So just dipped in, just in water this one because these are acrylics. These come off quite simply with water. And before we refit the coupling rods, we'll just clean these bits off as well because uh, they could, uh, if there's any paint on there, they could um, sort of stop them, the wheels going around as much, so it, it would create a bit of an issue. So just clean them off. And the middle uh, middle screw obviously is the longer one because it has to go through two layers. You can see there. And then just a light spray of black over the um, over the coupling rods. So lots of the pictures I've seen, they just they are it's just totally black. Um, it just covered in in grease so that's the look we're going for here and the chassis on a couple of seen is completely rust so uh, that's uh, that's a simple alternative as well so we're going to do that as well <clears throat> and then some weathering powder this is the Humbra one on on the wheels just to add a bit of uh, bit of extra texture and then again a couple of I've seen the steps um, are particularly rusty so we're, we're gonna do that on our model and then our Humbra weathering powder again and we'll do lots of that on this uh, on the top of this just bear in mind that when we lacquer this in a moment it's the colours are going to change ever so slightly, it won't be quite as vivid. This uh, this rust look hopefully will still be apparent. I'm not going to spend any time in the cab um, apart from just doing that line of uh, weathering powder. So a bit of powder on the back with this a mixture and air of the rust and the uh, and the dark earth humbrol weathering powder and just kind of blends things in a little bit at the back there 
and I just thought it would be a nice touch. Some on the top as well, just around the uh, around those windows where the water would have gathered. So this is our lacquer. This is um, Vallejo polyurethane matte lacquer, or varnish as it's called. Um, and I tend to put on a first coat, which is quite um, light and low pressure, and it just stops everything blowing away really. Um, or once it's on, then I can go in a bit thicker, um, higher, turn the pressure up a little bit, and make sure it gets a, a nice uh, couple of coats of this. I normally give it a couple of passes. Now I decided wanted just to um, just to enhance those water streaks a little bit more so this is the um, the buff again I've used and we're just going to do a few extra streaks of um, of the water there and just going to soften it with our with our brush and then adding a touch of real coal on the back so these are just neat PVA I'm just going to brush this on and we could take this out totally this uh, this sort of insert of coal um, but it's just as easy just to put a, a single layer of coal over the top we just we just about fit it in without it getting too high and I'm using for this the Hatton's Constructor um, coal. This is like medium, I think. I'm gonna just drop some of that in. Now that will set overnight, but for now we'll just uh, we'll just leave it where it is. And then the final part is some grease. So we're just gonna put the grease on just the buffers here. So I normally just touch it in with the brush and then touch it with my finger. And it kind of gives it a bit of a random feel. And there it is, we are done. Um, hope you enjoyed this, bit of a long one. Uh, but thanks for watching, we'll see you again very soon.